everybody, please look at here. Can you see there are two pre-modern Chinese courtyards on the screen? Do you know the first one was built in the Qing, uh, Western Zhou Dynasty between 1046 and 771 before Common Era? The second is what the courtyard was like after almost 3,000 years in the Qing Dynasty, which extended to the last century. Do they look similar? Yes, we may ask all through thousands of years, what did pre-modern Chinese people do? Did not they get bored to live in the almost unchanged courtyards? Even Sir Bannister Fletcher said, mm, this architecture appears to have been subject to little progress. Fletcher seems not wrong. In pre-modern China, people did use this type of building as houses, schools, temples, hospitals, governments, and even palaces and repeat it for millenniums. Well, let's have a look at today's China. Wow, so many fancy buildings and exciting metropolises. But we all know there are problems. The overemphasized material progress, the rapid pace of urbanization, the deteriorating environment, and the scarcity of resources. So I was curious, in pre-modern China, if the built form did not change, how could architecture evolve? I investigated a small part of the courtyard around its entrance and found that this evolution of architecture was mainly about the renewal of intangible heritage, such as rituals, laws, conventions, stories, poetry, and designations. I feel very excited to know that in pre-modern China, architecture could evolve in so many ways and did not rely on material changes, but still contributed to the civilization. Do you want to know how this mechanism was formed? Why it could be sustained for thousands of years? Why in modern architecture, the doctrine that new forms must be invented to reflect changing times and fashions prevails? If yes, you may like to read my thesis. Thank you.